Perth Watch, your horology channel broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. Today I have the latest piece, or at least my latest piece from Pagani. Uh, now Pagani are of course a company uh, which started making supercars, but I guess they must have got bored, maybe supercars just kind of lacked that oomph. So they decided to change to wristwatches, uh, homage or knockoff wrist wristwatches uh, nonetheless, or maybe not, you know, just going to put that in there for you guys who are going to fact check me. Uh, so anyway, today's uh, piece comes in this brand new packaging and pretty excited to see this in the, in the mail actually in my unboxing. So guys, without further ado, let's flip it around and take a closer look at what's in here. All right, guys, so here we have the case on the table here. This is definitely an upgrade of the usual black Pagani. This is actually more, you know, of a square box rather than the tiny black one you used to get. You know, nice silvery embossment, a bit of stitching here. I mean, ultimately it's very cardboard, right? But at least it looks like the design team from Pagani Design have come back from holiday and they have designed this new box because they probably uh, you know design little else they definitely don't design the watch here okay so let's just open it up for you guys so up here is a little bit of a storage uh, compartment uh, you know again guarantee card which is uh, typically not filled in for me anyway so you know fill it in pretend you can ring up the number and get someone to fix your watch if it breaks uh, let me know if you have tried that uh, I would be very surprised if you actually get anywhere uh, but you know, again, I've shown this before, I'm not going to really uh, flip that again, multi-compartment, uh, multi-caliber uh, manual I should say, uh, which covers uh, a lot of their kind of mecha quartz and automatic watches and you don't need it for this particular watch because of the, the basic movement in here. Uh, so this one uh, is interesting, All right, trying to kind of, uh, I guess, give you a feel of luxury or at least something above uh, just budget um, to give you that tag. You know, this is definitely a step up. I would, I have to give them that for this box here. All right, put that aside now. And this watch, I'm gonna disconnect uh, the strap here to kind of show it to you in more detail. So here we are, guys. This is uh, the Pagani Design Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean. I guess I shouldn't be calling this an Omega. Uh, they actually had the audacity to call this a Seamaster Planet Ocean. Uh, the model number is 1679. Uh, links down below to products uh, online uh, as I can find them. Uh, so check them out for the different colorways. Of course, it's going to have the different, you know, black, I think blue as well, and other versions as per usual. Uh, right, so this is going right now, as I checked it, about $115 on AliExpress. I think on Amazon USA is slightly more than that. Uh, again, product links down the bottom to check it out in detail if you wish. Uh, so, But the discussion will be a $115 watch. This is what I'm considering uh, this as. Okay, first up, as I usually do, guys, let's talk about the movement in here. So what we have... Uh, you know, you can guess it already, you know, as you see, this is a three-hand uh, date watch. It's the Seiko NH35A, not gonna, <laughs> definitely not gonna read out the specs to you guys. Uh, it has a rated accuracy, as you see there. In uh, the two weeks or so, actually, I've run this for about two weeks, it's running about plus eight seconds per day, which is definitely, in my book, acceptable uh, regulation for an NH35A. Uh, in this case, the date is actually symmetrically located in the six o'clock position. White this with vertical numbers, so good and done for implementing that because you obviously have to change out the disc for something less usual than the Seiko, uh, you know, date wheel, which is usually used for a 4:30 or three o'clock position. That's what it would usually sit at. Okay, so enough about the movement, guys. So what we want to move on to next is the case. And the case here is actually a 43 millimeter case. Now I'll point out that it's actually asymmetric. So that crown guard, this side, it kind of comes up and forms a bit of a crown guard, right? Whereas the other side, you know, is flush with the case. It's more of a flat thing. So it's asymmetric, 43 millimeters was what I make it. I assume they've actually absolutely just copied uh, the Omega, which I'll put a screenshot right here, right? It's the Omega Seamaster 
Planet Ocean 43.5 millimeter in America's cup colors is definitely what this uh, is homaging or rather knock offing if you want to call it that. Okay, so that's what it's copying. Uh, that's a 43.5 stipulated watch. I can't make this any more than 43 as where I measured this with calipers. The bezel itself is of course slightly smaller at 42 millimeters. Thickness wise, I think it emulates the uh, Omega pretty well. It's 16 millimeter in terms of thickness. Uh, it's 20 millimeter lug width on this particular watch with a lug to lug distance, which is actually slightly less than the Planet Ocean. The Planet Ocean, I believe is more than 50 millimeters as I have checked up online. This is actually measuring at 49 millimeters between my thumbs. Good on them for, the, for adjusting that slightly smaller because that means it suits more people. Overall weight on this rubber strap is only 112 grams, a very comfortable weight, despite the substantial, you know, kind of bulk of the case here. Okay, moving on to finishing that. So it's got, you know, a polished uh, surface at the top of the bezel. It's more kind of brushing at the side here. The finishing of the case, longitudinal on the side, circular brushing on the top surface of the lugs, and then circular brushing at the bottom of the case here with circular brushing on the case back. Uh, and of course, you've got that polished neural lug there, which is kind of Omega Seamaster, right? They've really imitated that pretty darn well, I have to say. So you've got that display case back. You can see that obviously a very nice display window. They usually do that. It's a screw down case back, display window, screw down crown with the Pagani signing. I'll have to say as well, it's got the signage there for the helium escape valve, which really is a bit of a pretend helium escape on this watch, right? It does screw up, but it only screws up about 120 degrees, unlike the real thing. Uh, screw down, uh, you know, sign crown. The water rating, surprisingly, is only 100 meters. I think they could easily have pushed this uh, a lot better than that, but they've only gone for 100 meters on this watch because it's not, I guess it's not a true dive watch, right? It really is a dive style watch is what we have here. Right, moving on to the dial then. Okay, so a pretty well done dial. So this is gloss white. It's got printed details right in the middle there, including the printed chapter ring around the periphery. It's got applied indices, uh, as well as red colored compass numerals. Hopefully you can appreciate the colors uh, in the macro shots that I will share with you guys here. It's got a gloss blue hand for the hour and it's got gloss blue and red for the minute. The hour is more like a stylized syringe. The minute is obviously an arrow and it's got a nice red arrow for the seconds there. Loom applied is on all the usual spots that you might expect. So all the indices, all three hands, as well as a bezel pip and a loom shot right here, of course, to let you see how it glows in the dark and it glows pretty well. This, you know, this watch actually glows not bad and glows through the night in my experience. Okay, on top of the dial, what we have is a fairly nice, you know, dome sapphire with a slight box edge. Not sure if you can appreciate there, but it, you know, this is actually a pretty well, you know, well done uh, dome sapphire, really. I, I do find that. Uh, around that is a 120 click unidirectional bezel, dive style bezel with a you know, a, a gloss blue and a bit of a matte red insert here. So I'm, I'm not sure whether this is a different material. Is this ceramic? This feels a bit different, but not quite the rubber on some of the Omega Planet Oceans. I suspect it's just a matte ceramic. Let's listen to it now. Alright, 10. Alright, so 120 click unidirectional dive style bezel. Okay, let's just get it back to the 12 o'clock position so that you guys uh, can be satisfied that I've got this back to the top here. All right, so that's the entire description of the case. Now the strap here, you know, bright color, it's got this canvas bit which is stitched in, uh, you know, so composite strap. But I, I gotta say this, the quality of this isn't fantastic. It's got fraying, probably difficult for me to capture all that maybe I will but there's there's some fraying on the strap and I have to say one of these ends I've had to glue it back because it came out uh, you know out of the box it was a bit loose so not the most fantastic quality I didn't I guess I'm not too surprised I have to say but you know I would have hoped they, they could have got that a bit better uh, the class is Omega style right so just release that so this is a push button 
uh, release single-sided deploying class. Uh, and the, the thing about this class is, you know, it actually hides bet between the two straps. So the contact with the skin is minimal strap, uh, or I should say minimal class and maximum just strap. So the way it closes out, you can see you hardly have any clasps contacting the skin and it's especially good for leather. Okay, so that's the description. Let's put it on the wrist for a wrist shot for you guys now. And there we have the Omega Planet Ocean 43.5, not Omega, I should say, right? The not Omega, a PD1679 Pagani design. So remembering, lug to lug width, they've very considerately reduced it to 49, which is not bad. It is still a very thick watch at 16, and 42 millimeter bezel is what we're seeing here, and that's how that silicon rubber, actually, I'm not sure whether it's silicon rubber, but rubber strap looks like on the wrist. Okay, so that's the entire description, guys. What have I particularly enjoyed about this piece? So I reckon, again, Pagani is pretty darn good as a, as a knockoff company, right? Very good value, Planet Ocean homage, pretty well done. I would say shockingly well executed asymmetric case. So that really surprised me that they pulled that off. And I got to say that dial is also pretty nicely done. It's got the usual good, good specs, right? A very nice dome sapphire crystal, really like that sapphire. It's got that NH35 reliable movement. Very fair loom, the loom application is not bad. And I love the fresh color layout, you know, the white, blue and red America's Cup. No credit to Pagani for that, they didn't design that. That's actually an Omega design, but you know, it's a fresh design which I quite like. Nice, you know, kind of contrast on the bezel as well for those colors there. What are the weaknesses? Well, look, again, it's a blatant homage copy knockoff design. Uh, so if you don't like that, well, don't get a Pagani. You know, you wouldn't be getting this brand. Uh, it's got that pretend play HEV. Why would you have an HEV on a watch like this? I think just because you're copying a Planet Ocean that has no function, I think, in a 100 meter watch. Uh, and, you know, quality wise, I pointed out the strap. It's not fantastic. And then, uh, the indices, this is going to be very difficult for me to show, but the reflection of the indices are not even, so it doesn't affect, you know, reflect evenly like you would expect in the real thing. Uh, in terms of the bezel, I would say this uh, has a slightly tinny feel to it, right? Uh, you, you heard me rotating it. It, it. It's actually slightly tinny, not the most positive sounding bezel. I mean, the back plate's not too bad, but just it's, it's just not a very uh, firm bezel. It feels a little bit... Uh, low end to me. Okay, so that's it guys. That's my entire comments about this watch. Let's just flip the camera around now for the wrap up. So there you go guys, my review of the Pagani Seamaster Planet Ocean Homage Dive Watch. Uh, in fact, they were audacious enough to name that uh, on their official uh, website or at least their store on AliExpress. Let me know what you think about this piece. You know, I honestly think that case is, is pretty fantastically done. You know, I, I'd be very happy, honestly, to see a case like this in the watch, I don't know, three or four times the price uh, that they are asking for this. But of course, it's not without its weaknesses. You know, it's got, uh, you know, that, that strap is, you know, it's, it's, it's not the best. It's pretty poor quality. Bezel, you know, that it could feel better. That bezel and mechanism is relatively weak. But, you know, let me know your thoughts on Pagani. If you own this watch, of course, would like to hear your own experience. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me, and as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.